gospel sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell the sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back ye ocean caves. Earth shall sing her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hill and deepest caves. Is a song of victory. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Amen. He sure does. You remember when you got saved? I do. I think the youngest Christian in here is probably Miss Brandy, right? Miss Brandy got saved about three weeks ago, I guess. We're going to have a baptism. It won't be this Sunday, but it'll be maybe Sunday week. We'll work it out that way. But uh, I'm glad that you're here. We got a visitor with us too. Yes, Paige's friend. What's your name again? Brooklyn, good to have you, Brooklyn. God bless you. And, and of course, the outlaws, I was told by John. John's outlaws are here. This is Charmin's parents. God bless you all for being here tonight, too. Uh, all right, let's pray. You ready to pray? God's been good to us, right? Amen. He's been good. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for being a Savior. Lord, thank you that you are our Savior. There's so many people in the world, I know, that uh, they worship uh, uh, little gods that don't do anything. And Lord, you are almighty God and you have uh, saved me. Thank you for that. And I pray that tonight you get all the preeminence, that you'd help us tonight worship you in spirit and truth. Uh, may our guests uh, be enjoy their time. May we, Lord, just worship you like you deserve it. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around and wave at each other for a second. It is Wednesday night. Did everybody get a, 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 a thing to write down prayer requests and praises? If you need a little piece of paper for prayer requests or praises, uh, we have uh, Miss Kathy's got them back there. Just raise your hand. All right, there's Josh has got need need one there. Uh, this Sunday is Easter sunrise sun uh, service uh, on the beach. Uh, Six thirty in the morning. You go across the bridge, take a left, first beach access on the right. You'll see the bus. There, so make sure you get there. 6:30. Uh, where I think it's going to be warm this year. It seems like it's the the warm front. I hadn't looked at extended forecasts. Have y'all? Uh, wear a coat. <laughs> It'll be a little. It, the wind chill is going to be a little cooler. So it's yeah, it's 40 in the morning. We're just going to. Uh, it's going to determine when you get up at four o'clock to say, Do I really want to get out there? Do I really want to get out there? Uh, but no, if you'd like to come out, then after that, if, hey, let me honestly say this. If you can't get out there at 6.30 in the morning, at least come, probably about 7.30 we'll be serving over here breakfast casseroles for everybody. So swing by there and, and uh, encourage folks to come to that. Uh, get the kids up to come to that. It, it'd be free, free breakfast, good fellowship. Uh, then we'll see from 7.30 to 8.30-ish, it'll be over with. We'll kind of clean up and you can go home and take your uh, an, an hour's nap, be back at 9.30 for prayer and, and uh, Sunday school. And, uh, and then the day, the day will go on. Sunday night, we have a special guest. Little David's going to be preaching Sunday night. And uh, it's a p.m. service. Sunrise isn't having a service on the p.m. service. He's going to come here. I, I had booked Frank Thacker to be with us. And, uh, and Frank's in heaven this year. And so uh, pray, pray for the services there. Uh, I, I appreciate that. So uh, uh, different things going on. Let's see. The uh, Bible verse of the week for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. 
Luke 19.10. Uh, don't forget there's no fellowship this month. That'll be easy to remember, no fellowship. Oh, I do need uh, those. One, can, can Someone can mow the yard and weed eat before Sunday. That would be great. I know we've had different men over the years. Over the, you've got to have a lawnmower and weed eater and someone, someone will bring you. So if uh, Josh is raising his hand. Amen. Well, so let, so everybody, let's tune in. Jason, praise the Lord. Thank you. That we can do it Saturday. Do it Saturday. Okay, we'll get with you. And I know uh, John. Sometimes uh, John John uh, Scott's not here tonight. I know Mike's done it. There, there's been different people. Been uh, and uh, Ronnie's done it. Every, maybe y'all can get together after church and coordinate. And uh, since Jason, you're the youngest one, you get to weed eat. But um, <laughs> right. Amen. Um, Let's see, I think that's about it. Uh, uh, April the 10th, men's prayer breakfast. So we'll be meeting over the uh, um, over there and praying and asking the Lord. This week the, uh, we have uh, uh, the first week back at school and, and the boys, how are you doing? The Schultz are doing good? Yeah. I'm hearing Sebastian. You did good this morning, today, did maybe? Was your... Was your um, what was your uh, what's what's that thing? Was your sloss? Did, did he move around? They have a they have what's it called a, a disciplined sloth that if he doesn't do right he moves down instead of up you know it's a, yeah and uh, I hear Preston likes to sing that's being sarcastic but we'll do that right so but uh, we're glad glad you're there uh, but uh, uh, anyway well it's it's good start to the uh, good week and I'm feeling a whole lot better hallelujah. Uh, I've I, I've been taking Chlortab, then uh, then Norma gave me some uh, some Advil stuff. I didn't take that, but I took a Sudafed, and that seems to really do the trick. Antihistamine is uh, I had all sorts of pressure wanting to go to sleep on you, so I'm I'm back on back on the saddle. So Amen. Hello, uh, are you happy tonight? Amen. All right, let's let's stay happy. Let's let's get in the groove. Seems like I'm missing something. What am I missing? I don't know. The seventeenth of, uh, of April. You're going, ladies. Are you going to go to the Landis retreat? Leslie is speaking uh, there. She's going to tell you what for, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun, right? Keely's going to speak too. We're going to all speak, 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 speak. Kyla Rowland. She talks and talks and talks. Some of y'all have heard Kyla Rowland. Hey, yeah. Amen. So you get your money's worth, right? You just you hear someone talk a lot. That's what it is. Anyway, well, let's do this. Let's stand again. Let's sing. Uh, this is midweek service, giving you enough juice to get through the rest of the week. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He never loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles, he is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly an end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me. Over the world the victory win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I forgot to mention Bennett back there. Hey, Bennett, Bennett, 
then I can't recognize you. You got a good looking haircut. Did you make a new friend this week? Where's your new friend? Is he over there? Sebastian. Is he over there? There's his friend. They made good friends this week. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. I tell you, lifelong buddies, right? All right. That is awesome. So uh, then that just, that blesses your heart to see kids. Uh, sometimes they, you want to pull your hair out. I'm glad I don't have to deal with it every day. That's why they, they're, they're young and they can handle it. But uh, uh, anyway, let's pray for the offering. One thing that I want to, I'll try to start uh, through it next week with April is, uh, um, trying to try, we want to raise some money for a playground, uh, another playground set, kind of like what's out there, to go over behind the new building. Um, I'm thinking that was, I'm, I think it was a couple thousand. It wasn't that crazy, because it's not a, like a commercial. If we got a commercial like to do at the parks, something like that, it's like fourteen thousand. It's crazy money, but this this has held up really well for the for the money, and and uh, we're we're trying to budget the the school will put up the rest of the fence to block it in, but try to raise a uh, couple thousand dollars. So if you get just just pray about it and ask the Lord what would the the Lord have you to give, and we need we would need guys to put it in to put it up, set it up when it gets here. But uh, you pray about that. Let I'm trying to keep it up front so you can put a little bit on it if you feel led to do that. That would be awesome. So. Uh, uh, thank you for always supporting the, the work of the ministry. We can't we, we can't get the gospel out. Can't uh, keep the lights on. The, uh, I mean, it's three four hundred dollars a month for each place every month. So there's little bills that you don't really think about a lot of times. But toilet paper, expensive, and all you do is flush. You flush your money right down the toilet, right? But uh, uh, <laughs> let, let's pray for the offering tonight, Father. We do pray that you meet our needs, and, and Lord, I, I know you will. God, you always have. Lord, you've always provided that which we need. Maybe not when we wanted it, but God, right when we needed it. Thank you for delivering a degree of health to us tonight to be here in church. Thank you for giving us the motivation to be here and to want to worship you. Thank you for these men taking up the offering. Thank you for our men that work in the yards and in the security and the nursery. Thank you for the ladies, those that clean the church and uh, do all the, the things that are behind the scenes. Bless them, Lord, and I pray that you would just uh, pour it out on them. Now, this offering, Lord, we know you can multiply it, and uh, we just ask your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> paper just just Miss June's going to sing. Amen. Come on, Miss June. God bless Miss June. God's children too long have been burdened. They are longing for heaven's bright shore Where heartaches are left far behind us And burdens are carried no more Come morning, I'll walk by the river I'll rest neath the evergreen tree So I'll carry my cross through the midnight Come morning, there's glory for me Sometimes I'm despised and rejected 
And I question, oh, Father, how long? Then I take, then I take one more look at Mount Calvary. And it gives me the strength to go on. Come morning, I'll walk by the river. I'll rest neath the evergreen tree. So I'll carry my cross through the midnight. Come morning, there's glory for me. So I'll carry my cross through the midnight. Come morning, there's glory for me. Thank you, Mr. Come morning, amen. I got all sorts of good stuff going on here today. A little drink. Uh, well, I do. I, I want to praise the Lord. I know the uh, uh, Kathy. You, you were planning to donate your refrigerator since so you could get your alls purchased, but but Mamma donated her refrigerator. And uh, praise the Lord, we'll eventually have refrigerator in this building again with with an ice maker. So. And uh, so that's that's a real blessing uh, in and of itself. So uh, appreciate Ma'am all donating her refrigerator. <clears throat> we have prayer requests and praises, but uh, let me just uh, uh, I, I just like to do praises. I want to do some praises. I mean, without you may have wrote them on here, but you got some praises tonight. You want to uh, go, go ahead? That's where I was hunting for you first, West, and then. Uh, Amen. 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 God is good all the time. Uh, this praise, His mercy endureth forever. Praise His holy name. And uh, traveling mercies for Dallas is having an MRI. Uh, we'll find out what's wrong with his back. Uh, this one says, I want to praise God for helping me find the right church for my family. Also, my kids, new school. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. I want to, hey, God bless you. Amen. I like that. Um, Miss Janet Praise uh, can talk a little better. <laughs> a little better. She has laryngitis, and her husband was praising the Lord right <laughs> uh, She did find out that Carson, the little boy that was in the wreck and had brain damage, is, is walking now, trying to walk. Uh, so that's a praise. Let's continue to pray for uh, Ellie uh, Louder, a uh, two-year-old, and to get... Uh, he, uh, gets choked and turns blue, having an endoscopy soon. So let's pray for that little boy. Um, I pray to uh, pray uh, the people who uh, who are suffering with COVID nineteen and all the families of lost family members. Uh, amen. And uh, pray for Brooklyn. That's right. Pray Paige's friends. So that's nice. Uh, God is right on time. How about that? Look, that's a good one there. Isn't that good? Unspoken request. We have that unspoken. Traveling mercy for Shelby on Friday and Chris on Sunday. They already split up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, I, he had to work or something. That's right. So, uh, pray for my friend Mary. She has a lot of health problems. So let's pray for Miss Mary. Um, and then uh, uh, Wes has already done his. He, he needed to write an epistle there. But uh, uh, let's pray for Matt Sattler. He's in boot camp. Is he hanging in there?
Okay. Well, it's a, a transition for sure. And then you, the praise is for the great warm weather. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> I want to tell you that where were we at? Uh, we went out and the pollen was everywhere and we prayed for a little rain. Was it Sunday? Or was it Wednesday? And today's Wednesday. I don't know, it was the other day and we prayed that the, the, it would rain a little bit and knock the pollen down, and it did. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, need to pray for Sharon Anderson. Uh, this is uh, Candy's cousin. She has congestive heart failure and COVID, so lift her up in prayer. Uh, Ed Wood, stage 4 colon cancer, lift him, continue. to kneel surgery April the 6th on gallbladder. Uh, they, they put that off, or they're back in the back counting there, but... Uh, uh, Walt Struthers, recovery from neck surgery. Joshua and Tennille. Miss Candy, uh, uh, Tennille's having gallbladder the 6th. Okay, removal, I guess they're doing. Uh, all right, let's keep praying for that. Another praise, safe, great trip, Salisbury, North Carolina. Fellowship of West Park Baptist at the Hills. Uh, prayer request is uh, Elizabeth start school Monday, praying for a great fourth quarter to finish the year. Oh, yeah. Uh, praise, uh, answer prayers, uh, pray for uh, Susan and Junior and my mom, Miss Stella. So uh, uh, let's continue to pray for the, the folks in the church. Yes. Yeah, it seems like yes. Amen. Just praise the Lord for that. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Y'all had any other uh, answered prayer? Miss Sharon was in the hospital. She did come home. So that, uh, and she's faring as good as can be expected. So let's continue to pray for Miss Sharon. Other folks that aren't here tonight, did you realize that most of the time people don't come on Wednesday? They're hindered uh, somehow, right? I, I do want to believe that most people that go to church regularly want to be in church on Wednesday, but they're hindered somehow. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's sickness, maybe it's the devil attacking. So let's just pray for those folks that are being hindered. Oh, I know what it was. There was somebody had a birthday. Who was it that had the birthday? It was a double birthday, wasn't it? It was Sydney had a birthday and she's 17. Can you believe it, Christy? Can you believe it? And who else had a birthday? Lainey had a birthday. Where's she at? Oh, okay. You got to encourage her. Well, let's sing happy birthday to the ones that's here, right? Are you ready to receive it? Did you get a new car? A new gun? I know your dad. No. <laughs> and you might. All right. Happy birthday, Sydney. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Amen. Well, that's wonderful. Speech. All right. Yeah, over here. Uh, the Misty Weeks. And Mamira, they were here Sunday night. Let's pray for them as well. We, you want to pray tonight? Let's pray, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and, and rejoice also at birthdays and healing. And, Lord, hearing good praises of how you just are always on time and you take care of us. Uh, Lord, thank you for being patient with us and uh, tolerating us. Lord, that mercy endures and grace abounds. Lord, but thank you for chastisement too that you kind of can whip up on us to teach us that we need to do better. Lord, we do lift up these prayer requests. We ask your hand to be upon these people that are struggling with uh, uh, physical issues and uh, Lord, sicknesses, chronic sicknesses. We pray for our folks that are struggling, our teenagers, the families aren't here that are hindered for some reason and I just pray you'll help them tonight. Uh, Lord, help us to love one another even more. Uh, even more. Our neighbors, love our neighbors, love you with all our heart, uh, mind, and strength. And God, we know we can do nothing without you. Everything that we do without you is meaningless, is vanity. And I do ask that you'd help us to have a mission mind, 
I pray that tonight that we would think about uh, this Sunday in the resurrection day that we celebrate your triumph over the, over the death, hell, and the grave. Lord, I pray that you would prepare our hearts even tonight for communion Sunday and that uh, we would want to be in fellowship with you. I pray for souls to be saved out of this church and the nurturing uh, and training that needs to happen, that it would take place. Pray you would stir on me and, Lord, continue to give me strength uh, to do more for you. And, Lord, uh, we'll praise you for what you'll do. God, you've so, been so good to us. Thank you for the finances that sustain this ministry. Thank you for the prayer support, the labor uh, of those that work so hard to keep everything functioning. Thank you for these dear people. Uh, may we do more for you and may these new new folks that are part of our fellowship and, and, and growing and maturing, Lord, may, may they see the joy in serving you. Bless our school, uh, our outreach ministries. I do pray for uh, those at home, Junior and Susan and my mom, those are sick. Uh, pray for those that are out because of providential hindrance again. Lord, we, we ask your touch on the message tonight. May it, may it help us and we'll thank you for what you'll do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming tonight. I know the Lord appreciates it as well. Psalms chapter 24 is where we'll be. Psalms 24. <clears throat> as we approach our celebration of Sunday, the Resurrection Day, uh, I think this psalm does a wonderful job. David does a wonderful job in describing uh, who God is and what he's providing and, and, and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Uh, here, I turned my cell phone there. Uh, John Gill, with, John Gill's a, 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 he's been dead for a long time. He wrote on every verse of the Bible. He, he said this about Psalms chapter 24, is written by David under the inspiration of God and is a prophecy of Christ and of the gospel church and describes the members of it. Now, I want you to think about this. This is Psalms 24 right after Psalms 23. Oh, hello, that's... Easy to figure that out. But everybody's familiar with Psalms 23 and how David is talking. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so on. six verses, one of surely goodness, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All wonderful, wonderful verses that are quoted probably just as much as John 3, 16. But I, sometimes we overlook um, some of the obvious. This isn't... Uh, trying to correct anybody. It's just making us more aware because I do the same thing. We can read the verses and see what the verses say, but we forget about uh, the author. We know the author, ultimate author is the Holy Ghost of God, but he used David to pen these words. And one thing I want you to kind of pick up on, and I want to try to uh, do better in this, is realize, get a sense of how much David meditated on who God is. How much David thought about what God did for him. We read the verses and we can apply them to our life, but sometimes we just don't realize, here's, a da here's David, he's, just a, he's an ordinary guy just like you and I, but look at how much he thought on God. How often do we think about God? In, in, in this, in this pattern of thought and in this depth. I know we go through the days, at least I do, and I'm sure you're similar, is that we'll say, thank you, Lord, and we'll say, thank you for the food, and we'll, we'll say, hey, you know, God loves you, and we'll do like that. But David would, uh, would obviously, in many part, times of the day, sit back and meditate on who God is, what He's done, what He's going to do, what He provides. He was reminding himself, wasn't he? He was kind of meditating you know, when things get bad in our life, it does us good to just sit back and think about how good God's been to us. Amen. Count your blessings, name them one, one by one. So here in this, this chapter, we're going to read the whole chapter. You can remain seated tonight. Uh, it says, a Psalm of David, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Well, that's a, do you ever talk to God that way or just... The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I mean, do we ever, we read it, but, and I don't know if you're getting it. I, I can't tell if you're getting it. I, I don't, maybe if you nod your head, I could tell. But what sprung out to me was, it's not just the words of what he's saying, is that here's a guy that's thinking them up. You catch my drift? That he's meditating, he's 
thinking on who God is, what God is, what God's done, what He's going to do, and who He is to Him, and He's pinning it down. Now, we may not be a, a, an author of that way, but I think it would do us good to start thinking of God more. In verse number 2, For He hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in His holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, ye, O ye gate, gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Now what's one last word? He finishes it with what? Sela, that's just not the long baby girl's name. But that word means to meditate upon this, to think about this. Uh, and to me, when you meditate upon something, you're actually trying to, you're, you're trying to commit it to memory, right? When you think you meditate upon a verse, you're trying to remember it. And so David is trying to tell us through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to let's, let's meditate upon this, let's commit this to memory. In most messages that you ever hear anybody preach or even teach, and they mention King David, they mention something about him just about every time they, think, they say, David is what? A man, a man after God's own heart. Where do they get that from? David was an adulterer. David was a murderer. David was, was a dirty scoundrel in a lot of ways. He was a, he, uh, uh, he was a man that uh, abandoned his, his place. He was supposed to be on the battlefield, and he was in the, in the palace. He, he had a lot of bad things going on for him. He, his family rebelled against him. All, all the, I mean, he, he's just not a, a good guy in some ways. But you know what David is? David is a picture of you and I and the potential of what we can be. And in the book of Acts, it, it, it mentions it in 1 Samuel 2, I believe, or it's 1 Kings. But the book of Acts is where it spells it out very clearly. Verse 13, chapter 13, verse 22. It says, And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill my will. So let me just help you, help you here. When you go through your day and you realize that you haven't hit the mark, don't give up. God's not looking for the perfect. He's looking for the, uh, the, the submissive. He's trying to see who's going to be obedient, even if you mess up. Even if you, uh, he's not calling the qualified, he's qualifying the called. He's, he's the one looking, uh, he's looking for someone that's going to be after God's own heart. Does, that, does it mean that it, every second of the day, I want you to think about something. What did they do back then? They, had, they didn't have cable. They didn't have cell phones. Why, what do you think messed up David? David had too much freedom, too much liberty. He got to looking out the window, right? What do you think they did with their day? When, you know, there's some people had to work a laborious job, I'm sure, just like uh, you might have a job where you know, it, it just takes every second of your day that you work. But think, for David's position, he had every liberty to do nothing but get in trouble. And it, he got in trouble, but ultimately he is known for what? Is he really known that when you think about just what I said, when you talk about David, you hear David being preached on, you hear David being talked about, they'll mention he's a man after God's own heart. They remember that verse and they also remember his mess up with Bathsheba. So what do we need to learn tonight through Psalm 24? What I believe God's trying to show us is, is the need to see God 
in our life like David saw God. David looked into it. He, re, he looked into what God had done for him, was doing for him, and will do for him. And he, he verbalized that. He stroked it down with a pen. And he, I guess a, a good way of saying, look at David's awareness. So some of you tonight, let me just say, some of you young people tonight are not aware that you're in church. Hello? When you're aware that you're in church, you're supposed to be paying some of you are too poor for that, right? You got no money to pay attention. David was very aware. I, one thing I've said, I've learned about David, David could repent and, and, and David could pray. Can we learn to repent and pray? David was self-aware. He realized his environment. David knew what he was doing when he took Bathsheba. David knew what he was doing when he had Uriah. David knew what he was doing when he was writing Psalms 24. Look what he was saying here. Let's break down some truths of David's awareness. Number one, David, uh, to help him get through his days, to help him get through his weeks, you think of Psalm 23, he was, gone to, he was a low spot there, wasn't he? He had to remind himself, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 24, he breaks down and declares ownership of creation. As David he didn't have television look at, young people, he didn't have iPhones, Instagram. He didn't have Facebook. He didn't have uh, a whole lot of anything to do. He had one thing that we all can do more of is, is observant of the creation. Observant of the flowers and the trees and the birds and the bees. And, and so David starts off with the declaration of ownership of this creation. Now David could look out at the, out out the, the trees in his kingdom and said, that's it's mine. And here's, you may not be getting it, we do that sometimes. We sit in our house, our car, or whatever property we own. We even look at our kids and say, it's mine. Me own it. Me work for it. You know, it's, it's mine. It's mine. That's mine. You, David didn't do that. David had the right to do it. It was his kingdom. It was his throne. But he was aware of this, aware of the ownership of creation. He says, he says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in them, even the people. Amen. For he hath found, and this is what I love about this, if you, when you start studying verses out, you see the little nuances, I guess, the things you don't pick up. And He says, for he hath founded it upon the seas. Wait a second. Founded what upon the seas? The earth. And establish it upon the floods. So David wasn't there when God created the, the heaven and the earth, was he? No, this was a long time after that. He wasn't there. Uh, yet he knew that dry land was established upon the seas. Who made him aware of that? Could he have read uh, some scrolls? I guess so, sure. But could not the Holy Ghost make uh, him aware of what Genesis 1 and 2 says. Let me read it for you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You know, when God created the heaven and the earth, the, the globe was a globe of water. Now here in Psalms 24, he says, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in, he, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established upon the floods. Why is that important to even talk about that? It's talking about specifics. When we start caring about specifics and we remember them, that means they're important to us. When, when let, let, let me confess something to you. There's many times that, especially the kids, and, and I think you do it too, even sometimes my own kids, some, sometimes it's an adult will come up to me and, and, and I'm kind of like busy or, or don't want to listen to them. You ever been there? And you kind of nod your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't tell me to repeat what you just said because I just, I just acknowledge. I, I hope that's not lying. Maybe it's just disinterested. I'm not interested in the specifics. So later down the road, if that was important, I'm going to be in trouble, isn't it? So what, where do, why do you think this is important? Because on our journey, it's important to remember who the Creator is. It's not you. 
Because what happens is we, want, may, we may never dare to say this, to say, I created the world, but you created your world. David knew the power of the flesh and knew how it had taken him off track. And he had tried to create his own little world with Bathsheba and so forth. But here he declares the ownership of creation that, that although, although he wasn't there, he knew who was the creator. He knew what God had did. Although he didn't use uh, Christ, uh, New Testament name, uh, I want you to know this, to, although he didn't use Christ in these verses, uh, the New Testament name for God, you know, we see Christ coming and we see the Messiah coming in the Old Testament, but it's not used in Genesis 1.1. But he, he was declaring who the Creator was, and that was Jesus. He was declaring because as you study the show that self approved, you start digging, you say, well, God created the heaven and the earth, right? Amen? 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 But isn't Jesus God? Some people don't understand that. You know why we have these cults out there today? Because they have forgot who owns the creation. Amen? They have forgotten who it is and they separate these two. They separate Jesus into being a little God and that's false doctrine. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. He declares it in John 1.1. 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Uh, without Him, nothing, uh, Him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1.16 declares it too. For by Him uh, were all things created that were in heaven and in the earth, visible, invisible, whether it be thrown or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things and by Him all things consist. Isn't that wonderful? David's teaching us how we can remember that God owns the creation. And you know who's part of the creation? He owns us. Without God's creation, we couldn't be here. Because he, he created the heaven and the earth, the fullness thereof, and then he took some dust and he scraped it up. And then he breathed into the nostrils and became a living soul. In Psalms 50, verse uh, 10, you know this verse, or at least part of it. Every, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. The old redneck said, even the taters in the hills. So David's... Uh, <laughs> declaration of God owning the creation includes you and I. This is why it's important as we read the Scriptures, we say, why is David saying this? I think he's saying it because he's reminding himself, but he wants the readers to remind themselves, if we're going to stay as close as we can, we can't forget that God owns us. We can't forget that God owns the, the birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees. We can't forget that God owns our bank account and God owns this world and universe. We can't forget, although the Democrats and Republicans, they all fight and the governments fight and they say, we own it and we own it. No, God owns it all. He owns it all. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, you know the verse, what? Know you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. So why is this important? These young people, you know what they're being eaten up with? Satanic activity through perversion and sexuality. The generation today is absolutely being inundated by perversion. Even just mild, just mild sexual content, mild, because it comes off just, you know, you, you show a naked person, people go, oh, but you show just a little bit of skin, you go, oh. And so the devil's trying to trick our young people that, and trying to trick us adults and our parents that you, you, need to be a, you need to have your own identity and you be what you want to be and you're, you're your own boss. Self-express. I remember when I first started pastoring, one of the first counseling I, sessions I had was with a lady that was, was committed in the, the Oaks. And you know, some people have to go there for different reasons. But what I found out the reason she was there is because she wanted to self-express. And God said, no, God, when, you're, when you're bought with a price, you, you are God's and you're supposed to express Him. So how are the kids self-expression? They want to wear funky, crazy clothes. They want their hair to go this way or that way, this way, down way. They want to puncture. They want to tattoo. They want to do And adults do that too. They want to express themselves instead of let their body be used for the glory of God. Uh, they want their body to, to say, please, someone take me and violate me because I feel lonely. You know why people get involved in sexual activity? They're lonely. 
Because somewhere along down the line, we have pervertedly taught them, I'm talking about as a nation, a society, that you, you find, you find uh, comfort and you find uh, friendship in sexuality instead of in Christ. And by the time they get enough to, old enough to realize it, they've done so much, they're so ashamed of it, and they, they shake their fist at God. Got to watch your children. It's important to remember who owns who owns who? I remember when I first came to this church, Chris, you may remember, remember they used to say this was Kitey's church, Fanny's church. And I come in and didn't know, I mean, that was said, I, it never, I think at one time they, uh, they gave the land or something like that at one point. But I remember uh, uh, people were telling me when we were starting to grow and, and do things, they were saying, you know that's Kitey's church. You know, and, you know, I would say, uh-uh, it's God's church. And I remember I got a call from Fanny. Now, she's in heaven, I hope. <laughs> I didn't know her real well. But she was an elderly woman at the time, lived down the road. She gave, we were about to build this building. Over here, we cleared the land. I don't know if some of you never heard this, but I went to her house to sit down to her, just talk to her to realize this is God's building. This is God. This is God. And she said, if you build on that building, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And, da, da. and I said, Fanny, this ain't your building. This, this isn't your property. How dare any of us be that foolish? And by the way, guess who won? <laughs> God did. God, God, the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Amen? You establish it. So it's important to know, remember who owns who. Uh, young people, listen to me. You don't own yourself. God owns you. He bought you with a price. He shed his blood for you. He died for your sins. Don't you let some sexual pervert, some deviant come take you, your innocence away. And mess with your mind. Quit watching that junk on television. It tells you the earth is billions of years old and we come from aliens or we come out of a slop out of, a, out of the ocean. It's all perversion. It's all filth. It's all wickedness. And it's soon going to be hate speech. It's important to remember who owns who. It helps define final authority. Final authority. Some of you remember this growing up. Uh, not this generation, my generation, last generation probably of this. But growing up, we knew who owned who. Like when you went to school and you disobeyed, the teacher owned your hind end. And then when you got home, your daddy or your mama owned your hind end. And you were just hoping God would come from the east, amen, right then and get you out a little. <laughs> you see, it defines final authority and leadership. Makes you realize when you're starting to step over here, you, you remember that he owns that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hurt it, I'm not gonna defile it. He owns that. David moves on uh, to lay out what's so important about eternity. And, and he goes from talking about creation to talking about the plan of salvation. Uh, before think about this, before the need for salvation is ever sensed in our in our being, in our soul. There must be established who owns it all. So in other words, if, if there's someone in the sound of my voice that you think you own your own life, you think it's, you're going to do what you want to do, you, you think, you, you know, the, the sky's the, the limit, you're not going to think about needing God, are you? Not going to think about the plan of salvation. You're not going to think about death. Very few young people think about death. And usually people that are sick or getting sick or have some type of problem think about death in reality. Most people don't think about death every day. But David moves on and he establishes who, who is, declares the ownership of, of creation. And then he goes right into the plan of salvation. For when you establish that God owns you and he built all this stuff and he slung it into existence and he said it is good, then you're ready, then you're ready, then you're ready for what? To receive the plan of salvation. We must live by God's rules, not what we make up to fit our own lifestyles. So in verse 3, he says, he asks a question. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall, who shall do that? You already established, he's asking the group of people that have accepted that God is owner of creation. He created all. So he's saying, who is it going to, who's going to stand before God? And he gives the answer. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his own, 
up his soul under vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. I'll explain that in a second. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord, the right and righteousness from God, his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. What does Selah mean? Meditate, meditate. Think about it. Hello. Don't go to sleep. Think. Lift up your heads. You think David, when he said Selah, he was saying, ain't time to sleep. It's time to think. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. He lays out the plan of salvation. This is clear presentation of salvation. He says, who's going to come to God? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Uh, he that has not lifted up his soul in vanity or deceit. I want you to notice here, Again, you have to think a little bit. You have to meditate on these things. Uh, think about these first two things. These, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. That's not a work that we can perform. You can't clean your hands. You can't clean your heart. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. We cannot create cleanliness or purity. It has to be imputed to us. We're not going to go to heaven because we've cleaned our hands with a dove soap. We ha we're not going to heaven because uh, we've took a bath or we stopped cussing or we stopped watching certain things and we started to put it on. We flipped, the, we turned the leaf over and started being a, good, a better person. A lot of people even, hey, hey recently someone came into here, didn't they, uh, Keely, and said, well, I thought baptism sent me to heaven. Guess what? I baptized him. And I can guarantee you before I baptize anybody, make sure they understand baptism don't save you. Usually I say it up there. This is a picture. It's not washing your sins away. It's just a typology. David's trying to get, get the picture into our brains uh, that the Holy Ghost has to, if you're going to approach God, you're going to go to God, you've got to have clean hands and, and, a, and, and, and a pure heart. Uh, what has to happen? A work of the Holy Ghost has to happen. It's something that I can't manufacture, and, I'm, I, and it's taken me years to learn that. I just thought, man, if I have a good message, the girls sing a good song, you know, you know, just get, get emotional, get all that. And everybody that gets emotional and comes to God with their own cleanliness and their own purity, they walk away just as dirty as they came. It's, a, it's an action of the Holy Ghost. He's describing the plan of salvation. He's saying, hey, you must understand God's a creator. He's created heaven, the earth, the fullness thereof. He's a creator of salvation. He's bought you with the prize. Jesus came to this earth or will be coming to this earth and die and shed his blood. And you have to come to him with a clean heart. And what does that mean? You've got to let the Holy Ghost minister to you. What is our part? What's our, there is a part of, for us. It, it, let me read it to you. It says who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Our part comes in with the desire of the heart. And so in other words, there's a lot of people, are, what, what we have to do when you come to God and the Holy Ghost affects you, you want real Holy Ghost salvation, you can't come to God deceitfully. You can't come to God, well, I just want to get out of hell free card. Uh, how, how do I come to God? I come to God humbly. I come to God uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm purified and cleansed through God, the Spirit. I, I, I come, my part is, is with the correct desire of the heart. Uh, it, hey, believing that God can, not that God can't. Or it says deceitfully or lying to God. Now, how many would be so honest tonight to say that before you got saved, before you truly got saved, you did that very thing. You came to God with a deceitful heart. I mean, you weren't going <laughs> like that, but you just came to God. I've heard a lot of the young people at like the eighth time they, they make a profession. So what happened last time? Well, I did what everybody wanted me to be. I didn't want everybody off my shoulders. I, got, I was just so tired of it. I didn't want to hear it no more. So they just prayed a prayer. Did y'all ever do that? You see David trying to tell us? See, isn't it weird how David thinks about these things? Do we ever think about this? We ever think about the kids sitting next to you that says that they're saved, they're still lost as a ball on highways? Charles Spurgeon said, never give anybody that has a 99% uh, uh, 99 hope of salvation, uh, 
Never tell them they're saved when they're only 99% uh, hopeful. Is that, uh, did I say that right? A lot of people say, well, I hope so. Well, don't ever give them assurance. Don't ever say, oh, well, yeah, you prayed the prayer. Hey, you don't know, I don't know, only they know when God knows. And you know as well as I do, if you truly been born again, that the Holy Ghost has done a cleansing you can't explain, has given you a new heart made of flesh, taken out the heart of clay, and only you and God knows. And you come to God through the power of the Holy Ghost, not deceitful or in vanity. It don't mean nothing popping you chewing gum. You're just going through the motions. How many people you know like that? A lot of young people do it. A lot of older people do it too. David describes what happens at salvation. It says he receives a blessing, righteousness. Receives a blessing. When I got saved, I don't remember walking out of the church from the chest out. I don't remember saying, I'm righteous now. I remember walking out of the church saying, I'm saved. I'm saved. You know what the root word of righteousness is? Right? I walked out of the church building. Right? I walked in the church building. Wrong. And, and I got a blessing. And that blessing was the imputed righteousness of the Son of God. And I walked out right. Boy, that makes me want to shout again. Amen. Verse 7 says, Selah means meditate. Meditation is called for. He says, to lift up your heads, uh, uh, your, your chest, to, uh, to open up your heart, your gates. He's, he's saying, open it up. Open it up. Wait a second. Is there more to that than I think there is? It is. I've talked with many, many people that just says, Preacher, you just don't know what I've gone through. I've got just too much to share. My childhood was horrible. I was abused and beaten, and they, and they have emotional things. They all closed up. They all closed up. What was David saying? He used to plan of salvation. He says, why don't you lift your head? <laughs> Let the gates open up. Let the doors open wide. Let the Holy Ghost make you right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, on the outside, it's still going to be nasty, dirty, and sometimes stinky, but thank God when the Holy Ghost is done on the inside, I am right. I'm as right as rain. Whatever that means, amen. A declaration of the king of glory is moving in. The king of glory. You know who you have inside you if you're saved tonight? Look up here, boys and girls. You know who you have inside? The king of glory. And he's declared us right. Not by what we've done or what we're going to do, but by what He has done, what He has established. Why? Because He is the creator of the heaven and the earth, the fullness thereof. He is the creator, the author, and the finisher of our faith. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Do you mean I can just go along for the ride? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, let go of the reins and let go of the, of the steering wheel. Let God the Holy Ghost d- deliver you and let the King of glory come in. Whew. One last thing. Once salvation is presented and accepted, David declares, and we've already talked about this, the need for meditation. Yoga has infiltrated America. It's a pagan Indian ritual. From, and it's, it's not a good thing at all. It opens the doorway to all the pagan beliefs. Them yoga britches have really done a work on men's eyes. And they said, they're so comfortable. Well, nakedness is comfortable too. Just one step off from that, amen? Sometimes you can see every bump, crack, crevice. It's not fun. But you know, yoga has, has killed the, the need for meditation because yoga has their meditation too. You see them, they see them God bless them if they can still do an Indian uh, uh, Indian style, and they put their fingers like that, like that's so when they, and they burn those nasty, stanky, filthy incense that I don't know anybody can. I mean, it's like, oh, uh, uh, I've never been able to even handle. Well, I can't handle many spells, skin or less. But uh, so let's get in skin tight britches, get a little mat, and let's get down in positions that I can't get up from, and let's meditate on how good I am. Become a better you. This is not what David was saying. David wasn't saying go to Kmart and Walmart and buy you some yoga britches. Not you either, men. Amen. This is what he said meditate on. By the way, you want to wear that stuff? Wear it inside your house. 
Just don't kill us on the outside. Amen? Who is the king of glory? He asked the question again. Why do you think he asked the question? What did he just get through talking about? Starts with S. Salvation. So he says, let the king of glory come in. So now, here's the thought. This is what I'm thinking. is like someone comes forward to get saved. The Holy Ghost is moving. And some of you have worked with people. This is what we teach them to do. We establish, you understand who God is, and sin, and, and da, 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 you go through that whole thing. God's creator. He owns you. And the plan of salvation is uh, He died for you. He loves for you. You accept you're a sinner. You need a salvation. And then you, you pray. You believe He died for you. Coming again, so on and so forth. You do something along that matter, along that, 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 those steps. And if they get saved, typically... When they get up, we'll say, what happened? I know some people say you don't ask them what happened because you so doubt. But David said, who is the king of glory? Who is he? He's different now. It's different now. Since Jesus saved my soul, it's different now. And now I am made whole. Leslie, sing for me. He says, who is the king of glory? So he, he, it's a rhetorical question. He's wanting to make sure you, that we're thinking about it. He says, the Lord strong and mighty. So there's something. Why does he say it like that? He's a military man. And I believe he's trying to declare to us that when something greater than you has moved in, you know there's something stronger than you. Amen. Something more mighty than you. And, and hey, there's something greater on the inside than I've ever had before. He's motivating me, directing me, uh, chastising me, loving me. That's the king of glory. So you got to meditate on this. The Lord mighty in battle. Because you know it was a battle when you got saved, remember? It's a little struggle. Maybe it wasn't a long, hard one. Maybe it was over a period of days or weeks. And he says this again, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Open your mind, the gates to your mind. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Open up your chest, your heart, and the King of glory shall come in. He says it again, who is? Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And he finalizes it with, think about this. Think about this. Is he? Is he the King of glory in your life? Is he your strength? Is he your mighty? Is he, is he the one fighting your battles? Is he the one that you're lifting your head up to? You're opening your heart, your mind, your chest to? You're letting God rule your heart? Who is he? Who is this King of glory? Who is he? The question is asked to see if God has truly revealed himself to you. Let me say that again. Did that catch anybody by surprise? The question is asked, in my opinion, he, the question is asked, has God revealed himself to you? You know why there's so many confused people, believers in churches, so many confused people in church that don't know if they're believers, don't know if they're saved, don't, because they can't tell you whether or not God's revealed himself to you. Now, can I describe to you some figure, some outline, some silhouette, uh, some s spiritual being? No, I can't describe that. But I can describe December 5th of 1993. I can describe that I, when I went down a beggar, I came up a, a king. Amen. I went down poor as Job's turkey, but I came up as royalty. Something happened to me that day. God revealed Himself to me. And over all these years, He's continually revealing Himself. Sometimes He's revealing Himself with the hand of chastisement. And He lets sickness come upon me to refine me. He's letting trials come upon me to show Himself true that He is the God of all universe, but He's also the God of a miracle. He's also my God. He's also the King of glory. Think about it. He says, meditate on this. Repetition of thought is made. He keeps saying, lift up your heads, your gates, your doors. This is where meditation needs to take place. We keep thinking about who He is to me. We can think about God as the Creator, but it's, that can be impersonal, can it? And no different than if you made, if you made some, uh, some cake and I think about you. Well, you know, you, you created a cake. That can be impersonal, but then it gets personal. He's the God of my salvation. And then he gets even more. He's the king of glory. I've shared with you so many times before, the only way that we give God glory is giving our self. Who is the king of glory? He's the creator. He's the almighty savior. 
And he's the king of glory. He's the king of it all. The king is coming. The king is coming. I have heard the trumpet sound. The king's coming. Sunday, we re- we're going we're gonna to bow. We're going to take communion. We're going we're gonna to just have a glorious uh, resurrection morning celebrating that the king is coming. And what we need to try to do more between now and then is meditate. Just sit back and think about just where you are now and why you're there is because God is good. And just think about where you're not. And the reason why you're not there is because God is good. And just think about where you're going to be Sunday. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to keep me from worshiping God. Why is that? Because God is good. He is the King of glory. Would you please stand? Well, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for you inspiring King David to write some words down to make me think about who you are to me. Lord, thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith. Boy, whew, thank you for being the creator. We got somewhere to go. We got some creator of the heaven and the earth. We're going to be in heaven soon. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for saving me, not because I'm, I was a good kid, but because you loved me with an everlasting love. Thank you for being the king. <laughs> to the king alone, I will lift. Maybe sing that, baby. To the king. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, is there someone here this evening that would say, Preacher, I need to be saved. I really, I don't know where I'll go if I die, and I, I want to know Jesus. Is tonight the night God been dealing with your heart? You know you need to get right with God? Would you slip your hand up, ma'am? Sir, young person, you slip your hand up and let us pray for you? Is there anybody here tonight to say, Preacher, I need to be saved? I won't embarrass you, I won't come to you, but do you need to be saved? Slip your hand up. Anybody here like that? I see your hand, sir. Would you like to talk with somebody? Slip out, talk with them. I like Gary's right there. He's right there. He won't embarrass you. Okay. Talk with me later, though, okay? Maybe we can talk tomorrow. Listen, church, we need to pray for the young people. Pray for each other. You don't know how many people are saved in here. Listen to this song. Maybe God moves on your heart. Come pray. We just got, we, I ended early. It's not even 8.30 yet. Listen. To the King who gave everything to me, whose body crucified high on Calvary's tree, whose redemptive blood makes way for me, I now give everything. Need some adults to pray with these kids. To the king who came in the form of a child, all powerful God, and yet so mild, whose obedience shows the way for me. I humbly come to thee. If you knew Jesus was coming back Sunday, how would we prepare for His entry? How would we prepare for God coming? But the truth of the matter, He could come at any moment, any, any minute. Young person, don't, don't, don't slough it off. Don't push it away. You may not have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but I know who the answer is. 
He is the way, the truth, the life. And no man come to the Father but by Christ, by Him. God bless you. Uh, hey, guys, try to get together with Brother Jason here. Uh, if you can, about the yard work or get his number. I can get his number to you so we can get that done, make sure that's right. Uh, and uh, let's prepare. Hey, uh, sunrise, sunrise, we're just going to have coffee. No donuts because we're having, um, and because most few people eat them anyway. We end up buying 10 dozen and giving away nine. So uh, um, we're just going to have coffee on the beach, and uh, that'll be good. And we'll see you at 6.30 in the morning. If you can help out Saturday sometime, get that through, that'd be great. Brother Aubrey, would you dismiss us?